This video is only part of an unpaid, unbiased, in-depth review from an average rider's perspective, so check out the rest in the link below at thegoodride.com. If you want real advice, fill out the Me Harmony profile in the link below so I can help you properly. And if this video helps, please consider donating or buying through our links. Thanks for watching. Welcome to The Good Ride. I'm James Beastie, your Me Harmony snowboarding guide. This is the Woolly Nivelt 157 fish from Solomon. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Probably not. I rode this with Union Atlas, Burton Kendos. Got this in a wide variety of conditions. Everything from flat lit, but fun, good groomers, little firm in places, but mostly fun. Then I got it in about four inches of wet powder. Then I got it in what it's intended to ride, very deep, low angle to medium angle powder at Mount Bachelor. I compared this against a wide variety of boards just to see where it sat on the spectrum. I compared it against the LibTech Retro Ripper, the Karua Dart, the Capita Spring Break 158 Powder Pill, the Rad Air Tanker 201, and my Cardiff Pagoda 158. And to give you a short summary, this board floats incredibly well in the deep deep and it also really excelled in groomers. It's just a very poppy, drivey, floaty, light, fun, energetic ride that I had a good time in all conditions except for harder micro bumpy snow and pretty uneven conditions that could buck and bounce us around. The one thing I would say that I personally don't like about this board and others feel kind of similar is the sidewall construction. It's not ABS and it's not as reliable. I like that they're trying to avoid ABS because it's so toxic, but it just leads to making the board a little more chattery, a little more unforgiving. Sometimes it can pass that chatter up into your joints and I don't like that, but overall, it wasn't as bad as it's been with some boards that I've tried in Solomon's line over the years, and I had a pretty good time with it. So I'm not sure if this is a deal breaker for you, and personally, I'm not sure if it's a deal breaker for me. Now, when it comes to sizing, this 57 felt right. I felt like I could manage this well for my boot size, despite its extra wide width. I think it's like a 26.4 waist or something like that. It's pretty wide. And if they had a size down, it might be more fun on groomers, but I would really miss the size and powder. This felt just right. Davey was gonna join in on this review because he tried this, but he was just way too big for this. I think they might have a 162. That would probably be more Davey size, but this was just too little for him, especially in low angle powder. Now, when it comes to the shape, this is tapered and directional and very set back but it's not ultra snow surfy setback. It's definitely on the snow surf side, but it's more in that world of being just a little more forward, kind of that in between alternative free ride and snow surf where there's some tail left so you can get some air and land and you don't feel like you're just on the tail like you would be on a surfboard. When it comes to the camber profile, there's a lot of camber going on. I was really surprised to see how much camber there was because I looked at it really after I wrote it just because I, I didn't want any preconceived notions. And then I looked at it and I was surprised at how much powder float it had for how much camber it had. But it's definitely a mostly camber ride, a little bit of early rise, but not much. It's more technical, especially if you ride this on groomers and you want to go out and carve, you're going to need to be on your game a lot. And if you get off your game, it'll skid a turn a little easier than a full camber board, but not by much. Now let's talk flex here. Just do an overall flex here. Kind of has like a medium, medium stiff, but then you get down in between the feet here and this is really stiff right here between the feet. The nose is pretty medium, kind of soft, and the tail is stiffer than the nose for sure, but a little softer than the middle. This fish has a good pop to it, 
It's easy to butter up on the tail to kind of wheelie up and powder if you need to. It's got good ollie power, very easy to access for an average rider like myself. The nose is easy to butter on and I just love the way this pops. The only thing I don't like is like I talked about in the summary is the construction of the sidewalls. I just don't feel like it's as damp as some boards and I wish it had just a little bit more there. I don't want to mess too much with the pop, but I'd be willing to sacrifice just a little bit of pop, or maybe not if they change the sidewall construction to where it would just be a little more damp in all conditions. Now, when it comes to speed, there's good base glide here. I think it's upper tier and it had a very easy glide, even not really that well waxed. If I had spent the time waxing it, I think it might be very close to some of my favorite bases that just have that effortless, easy glide. I think it's very good. So if you like to maintain your base and you like it to glide and powder, this will be a great board for that. When it comes to pointing it, this is not a bomber. There's a lot of pop to it, but sometimes with a lot of pop comes some chatter. And there is a little bit of chatter if you really want to point it, but it was more than fine for me on those few modest straight lines I did. I'm not really a straight liner. I'm kind of more of a turny guy. And I had no problem though on those few times I wanted to point it. It did okay. Great for moderate to maybe above average mountain speed. Now, when it comes to edge hold, I felt like this had really good grip, especially in hard snow. I don't know what they're doing with the side cut. It doesn't seem to be really disrupted, but it's working. Did a good job, gripped well. Hard snow was good. It was not amazing, but it's not something you want in icy snow, I don't think, unless you really know how to twist and engage the edge into the snow. Now, when it comes to turn initiation, in powder, this was medium, medium fast, and it went wherever I wanted it to go. I never felt too uncomfortable in the trees, although I have a lot of space in my trees. But if I were in really tight spots, I might want something else. But overall, I felt like it was on par with two of probably the most similar boards I tested it against, the Dart and the Retro Ripper. I think those boards were just a touch quicker, but not by much. And then my Pagoda, I thought it was much faster and the Powder Pill was a, a little faster too. The Radar Tanker is another world. But overall, I really liked the turning experience. And when I got this on Groomers, the spring out of the turn was exceptional. This has a very fun turning experience and I could make across the groomer carves really well. I could make circle carves with this pretty well too. And I think it's pretty balanced. I didn't feel like one thing really stood out, but I felt like it could kind of do any turn I was in the mood for, even down the line, kind of higher speed S turns, this was okay with as well. So I really liked it. And just the pop and carving power was Excellent. This is a very good carver in good conditions. Now, when it comes to powder, this is just amazing. Almost waist deep powder in some places was no problem with this guy. It was better than the Retro Ripper I tried, right there with the Dart, and almost there with my Spring Break Powder Pill, which is one of the floatiest boards I've ever tried, maybe other than the Tree Hunter. It's just such an easy floating, amazing, fun board. And for this to even hang with it and be in the same peer group, maybe just a touch less, I had no problem staying afloat in low angle powder where a lot of other people were getting stuck and couldn't make it through these areas. This just stayed on top of the snow and the faster base just kept it going. I just always felt happy, floaty. I was able to make more turns than other people in low angle powder and I was having a time on this. This has a very good setback on board. Not amazing compared to some snow surfers, but overall 
very good setback on board. You have seven by two inserts instead of the normal six by two or sometimes even five by two. So you have much more stance range options and you can set this back pretty far. Not super far, but way further than most boards out there. And you can get really good directional float. You have a little bit of a swallow tail going on here, a little bit of a fish tail, but not too much. You've got a good amount of taper, I think 20 mil. So this is just an amazing floater. So overall, the only thing that could be possibly a deal breaker for some is that sidewall construction. Not even sure if it's a deal breaker for myself. I'm not a fan of that, but the board rode so well, it might be worth giving it a go because I just had a time on this.